All right, folks. So today we're going to talk about decibels because a lot of hams find that confusing. Let's begin by exploring the decibel or DB, a critical concept in measuring power, sound, and signal strength. The decibel is a logarithmic unit, meaning it represents ratios on a scale that increases or decreases exponentially. This is why decibels are useful in contexts like antenna gain, where signal strength can vary dramatically over distance. Whether we're talking about sound intensity or radio waves, the decibel provides a universal language for comparison. So what we have on the slide is a decibel is a logarithmic unit to express ratio of two values, commonly power levels, sound or electrical signals. The logarithmic nature of the decibel scale allows large variations in power to be represented by manageable numbers, which is super handy. For common applications, we have decibels are widely used in fields such as acoustics, electronics, and communications particularly in antenna gain measurement. Bring your ideas to life with PCBWay.com, offering high-quality PCB manufacturing and assembly services at unbeatable prices. Plus, don't miss the PCBWay.com 7th Project Design Contest, dedicated to inspiring open-source innovation and encouraging the electronics community to grow. From prototypes to full-scale production, PCBWay.com is your trusted partner. Unleash your creativity and join the movement. Visit PCBWay.com today and turn your vision into reality. The Decibel, developed by engineers at Bell Labs and named in honor of Alexander Graham Bell, was a major breakthrough in early telecommunications. As telephone lines expanded, engineers faced the challenge of measuring signal losses across long distances. The Decibel, based on the logarithmic scale, allowed them to quantify these losses in a more intuitive and scalable way. The system revolutionized how we measure not only signal strength, but also sound and power, solving the issue of managing large variations in values and making modern communications possible. The important thing to take from this slide is the third point, logarithmic solution. The logarithmic nature of the decibel allowed for cleaner measurement of signal degradation over long distances. In measuring quantities like sound, power, or signal strength, we often use two types of scales, linear and logarithmic. A linear scale progresses in equal steps, like measuring distance in meters, miles, feet, inches, all that stuff, where each unit adds the same amount. A logarithmic scale, however, progresses by multiplying values, which is ideal for phenomena like sound intensity or signal strength, where changes can span several orders of magnitude. This is why decibels, or dB, use logarithmic scales. It allows us to represent huge variations in signal power with more manageable numbers. Understanding this difference is key in fields like electronics and radio communications. So with a linear scale, it increases in equal increments. For example, moving from 1 to 2 to 3 means adding a constant value each time. A logarithmic scale increases exponentially. For example, moving from 1 to 10 or 10 to 100 means multiplying by a constant factor. Decibels use a logarithmic scale because the signal strength can vary dramatically, allowing small changes in dB to represent large changes in power. So here's a chart that I put together that kind of helps highlight the difference. And we have 100 watts, 200 watts, and 400 watt power levels. And then you can see by the blue bars, with each doubling of power, the size of the bar doubles. And this becomes unmanageable quickly. If you take a look at the green bars, they represent dBm. We'll talk about that as we go. The first one is 50, then it goes to 53, and then to 56. So by using the logarithmic dB scale, we only go up by a number of 6 when we go up by a number of 300 with increases in power measured by watts. At its core, a decibel is a logarithmic unit that compares two values, whether power, voltage, or other quantities. In ham radio, we encounter decibels frequently when discussing signal strength, antenna gain, and noise levels. A critical aspect to remember is the 3 dB rule. Increasing by 3 dB doubles the power, while decreasing by 3 dB halves the power. This principle allows us to quantify how much stronger or weaker our signal becomes with even small dB changes, making it essential for optimizing communication efficiency. And the core takeaway for this slide is the second bullet. In ham radio, decibels are seen in signal strength, antenna gain, and noise level. We just can't get away from them. Let's turn the conversation to DBM and why it's used in ham radio. 
dBm, or decibels relative to one milliwatt, is widely used in ham radio to measure power output. It offers an absolute reference for power, unlike dB, which measures relative gain or loss. For instance, zero dBm represents one milliwatt of power, while positive or negative dBm values show power levels above or below this reference. This unit is critical in ham radio because it provides a clear, comparable measurement of power transfer and signal strength, making it easier to optimize communication systems. And the key takeaway on this slide is the third bullet, advantages of dBm. It is especially useful because it provides a standard unit for comparing different power levels in radio systems, simplifying system design and communication. Let's talk a little bit about DBI and DBD and how it applies to antenna gain measurements. When discussing antenna gain, two common terms you will encounter are DBI and DBD. These represent antenna gain relative to different reference points. DBI compares antenna gain to an isotropic radiator, a theoretical construct that radiates uniformly in all directions. On the other hand, DBD compares gain to a dipole antenna, which radiates in two lobes and offers a more realistic directional comparison. Understanding the difference is critical because manufacturers use both measurements in their specifications. Always, always take manufacturer claims around gain with a grain of salt. Generally, converting between them is straightforward. DBI is equal to DBD plus 2.15, which accounts for the 2.15 dB of gain a dipole antenna has over an isotropic one. What we see in amateur radio antenna designs presented by manufacturers is values typically in DBI because it appears higher than DBD. And oftentimes they'll just say 2 dB of gain without referencing if it's DBI or DBD. So always, again, be careful when taking a look at antenna manufacturer claims. In ham radio, signal strength is quantified by S levels, which range from S1, very weak, to S9 and beyond which is extremely strong. The S-level scale is logarithmic, meaning that each increase in S-level corresponds to a significant change in power, specifically moving up one level, say from S8 to S9, means the signal is now 6 dB stronger. If the signal exceeds S9, further strength is recorded in decibels above S9, often displayed as S9 plus 10, S9 plus 20, etc. Understanding this is important in practical radio communications for judging signal clarity and strength over frequencies and distances. Last, let's talk about DBC, or decibels relative to the carrier. It's commonly used in communication systems, including ham radio, to measure the level of noise or unwanted signals relative to the main carrier signal. It plays a key role in evaluating signal quality and purity. When hams or radio operators talk about DBC, they're usually concerned with minimizing the interference, ensuring that the signal to noise ratio remains optimal. This measurement is important for improving the clarity and readability of radio communications. That's gonna wrap this video up. I hope it answers some questions for folks. If you have any other questions, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching.